This is IBM Museum. Just some final notes on a long recording session that I broke into about three or four different videos. And I want to end it with a little bit of the overall notes. Undoubtedly, I'll come up with something that's a little bit more concise, or if anyone knows of, of a little bit more concise of sequence to set this up, because I really stumbled through things. But I wanted to show the end product of what I came up with. And I haven't gone through and you know fully got all the drivers on Windows XP as of yet. But I want to demonstrate a little bit of the process that this system goes through in, in booting that dual boot process, how to go through for the Windows XP side or the MS-DOS side. Now, as it is, the default timer is like 25 seconds that it would go through and start up Windows XP Professional. Now, I'm going to go through, and of course, if you arrow down, or the, that just turns off the timer, and that selects the MS-DOS being the, the secondary. So that's where I would go through. I'd just let it boot up to Windows XP if that's where I wanted to end up, or I'd select MS-DOS to go through and be able to run that environment. Okay, and I can go through and modify the auto exec bat and have it do things. Uh, could even have it to where I get this CD ROM driver going. Um, even it's aware of the other hardware that's on the system as well, like that Adaptec SCSI controller and things like that. So there's, there's possibilities there as far as the way that I can have this DOS environment set up and that is a full you know the the full setup process as I went through on the that video it's got all of the <laughs> that's and that's kind of funny we'll get to that in a moment too I've got that icons directory there and so if I go to the DOS directory I've got all the, otherwise have all the programs that you would expect from an installation of, of DOS. Now, as I say, for the Windows XP side, we just control delete have the system reboot. And I think it's it's going through the just the post information the the memory checks and things like that i think is what is involving the the time here and it seems like it cycles and it goes to the rom extensions for like the network agent and the adapt tech and i can actually even turn off those messages and or you know, at some later point when I have SCSI devices, I can show how that interface is because one of the reasons for me setting up that Windows XP side, I guess it's 30 seconds is a, is a default. I guess I didn't uh, initially see that in the display. But one of the, the primary reasons I wanted to set up an XP machine is, is because those HP uh, SCSI interface scanners utilize Windows XP, or they they're they're supported under Windows XP very well. And I have that Adaptec um, SCSI ad adapter in there to to 
do something like that. In fact, I've got a SCSI cable and I can probably even go through and see if it recognizes um, the, the scanner that I want to set up in that instance on it. But within the Windows XP, and it'd be nice, I found this Access IBM um, program for that covers this particular model. This is the S51 model. And you have the ability, if you get online to, and it goes through and it has IBM links, which are now dead. But if you, if you go to them directly on another system, but it'd be nice if they had the, the drivers that the devices used in that package. And I've gone through and um, taken a picture of the, of the Broadcom chip in there and so at least I'll get network uh, potential right off the bat and then uh, I can see what support is left for this unit. It should be on the, the Lenovo site. Now the other angle I wanted to, to point out and even though I don't have a boot manager nothing else um, just be careful when you get into XP because that C drive that MS-DOS is on is listed you know, that's, that's the MS-DOS drive, the C drive. And so it's going to be, you don't want to install, you know, when you go through and install programs onto the system, you want to be careful of, of selecting the right drive. And this is actually something that's left over <laughs> from, uh, that access IBM that I installed and it was it was the same way where I wasn't careful and um, and I you know installed it to that uh, to that directory uh, on the C drive and this is where Windows XP is and normally your big your big area that you should have your your programs and everything else that you do under XP, but it is nice that from XP you can also go through and take things over to that MS DOS partition very easily from XP. Moving moving files over in case there's something that needs to go into DOS, and of course recognize the limitations of the the DOS aspect. I could go through and I could, for instance. Um, get those diskette images and download them and I wouldn't necessarily even have to run a command prompt from Windows. I could even go through and drop them over to that 2 gigabyte partition in there. So it, it has some functionality too just despite being careful that you're in when you install programs and work with the drives that you have the right drives selected. And of course that, that mistake is easily undone because you can just simply go in there and, as I did, and uh, delete things. Um, now, you also don't want to do anything such as the FDIF. You don't want to repartition that space after this is all said and done. All the contortions that I went through in this process, um, and that was undone to go through and I F disk my partition and just poof instantly, you know, the the NT loader is is lost. It doesn't see that partition anymore. So you go through and you reinstall DOS and you you've kind of undone some of those steps. So I I learned from that lesson and also I could have gone through, I, I even selected repair the first time and it dropped me into this uh, the repair prompt that if I were knowledgeable, I could have probably set up the NT loader and the multi-boot aspect uh, from that a little bit better. And that's maybe some knowledge for me to gain on how to do that. But I, I just you know took the more timely route and I reinstalled Windows XP once again reactivated and it, sure enough it took some time but once I had the structure and this is where you know I want to be um, not to say that there isn't further work on this 
I, I found that I probably misread when I ordered the memory and it probably, it you know, it said a two gigabyte set probably and I didn't interpret that as each module. I wanted them as, as two gigabyte to go up to that system maximum recognize under Windows XP 32 bit of four gigabyte. And so I'll go through and I'll be more careful when I order for that. Um, that's just one step further for the hardware gain those drivers on there and you know i'll have a setup for a very nice system here i'm glad i didn't have to go through any of the blue screens the 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 diskette drive that's in the system went through that ms dos 6.21 setup perfectly fine and so it, it read those diskettes. It looks like everything is working to that. So the parts on the machine look fully functional. Granted, it did take that, that motherboard tray replacement. And that was about $60 total. I, don't, I think it was shipped to me for free, which really wasn't, that's not too bad. I mean, I'm, I'm taking a, what some people relate as an obs, obsolete, system or a curbside you know that they'll put out there uh Pentium 4 who cares about those you know but it to me they're nice little systems and I I will appreciate having this one being able to run Windows XP Pro and and do the things and work with it and having that dual boot set up as well so that's the final note after you know, close to three hours worth of, of video today. And this is the last one that I'll do today, get uploaded. And probably tomorrow I'm going to, I'm going to start working on the, the net Vista, the mechanics of that. And I have enough for a video there. There's, there's, uh, besides the mechanical modifications I have to do on that, on that system, there is some other aspects that have come up. And I, I probably need to prep a little bit for that one for the, the steps I'll go through as I show that. But that's, you know, the, the notes to cover the three hours worth of viewing that you uh, had to do with the other videos. And if you like this video, click on that like button. Click on subscribe. I mean, you get warts and all with me. Sometimes it's a learning process of me going through and having to remember these sequences and not going through and searching online and maybe finding out if somebody's minimized these steps. But I can come up with a more concise video later on to show how to do this. Um, it might even be an aspect of putting a larger drive on the system and going through and the setup from there of having more of a stepped or a scripted process that it becomes easier it's not so convoluted like it was but you know subscribe to my channel you'll get notified for all these uh incoming videos i do um multiple videos in this case for today and um you know recommend it to your friends if if they like this stuff too going through and learning with someone as me that i just yeah I have to remember some of the things I've done in the in the past and some of the setup. But that is all I have for now. That's a wrap for today. This is IBM Museum. Thank you. <laughs>